Oi, what's up boys and grots and little snots and can't forget the digger knobs. Hey, what's going on everybody? This is G the Hyper Sapien, and in this video, we're going to continue exploring the Orc miniature range. This time, we're having a look at Orc Mega Knobs. So here's the box here. We have four miniatures. You get three Mega Knobs and this little Euler Grot here. So yeah, not sure if you can really count that as a miniature. <laughs> I'm joking. It's just funny when you see four miniatures, you get excited like, oh, four big boys. And then you get Pee Wee Herman over here. So yeah, we'll have a quick look at the back. Shows you different weapon options. Totem pole. You can turn it into an orc big mac from this kit so that's actually what that is as well they look nice in different schemes i mean the black the yellow and the red are all quite nice aren't they you get your citadel paint guide there for the yellow, the metals, or the blacks, you know, all the different colours. Like always, they wouldn't show you all of them, but you know, I guess the blues for like the cables. You get some bronze, some reds, squig orange, which is sort of a pastel red orange colour, a couple of greens. yeah i'll bust this open and we'll have a look first off we get a baggie with the bases for the mega knobs and as always they seem to always love putting a little loose one in there so that's for peewee herman so we'll put them aside put the sprues as always we'll go through this book first so this is the orc assembly guide so choose variant you want to build mega knobs with power claw and twin linked shooter. Some mega knobs with two kill saws. Or you get the big mech. Which looks absolutely awesome. Special instructions, stage complete. Choice of parts, paint before assembly. Do not glue the components, repeat process. Alternate view. And dry fit stage before gluing. And then they always want us to read this. So it's basically before assembling your model kit. Read through this. Pair of plastic cutters. To remove the pieces from the frame. To assemble your model you'll need a plastic glue. And yeah they may recommend Citadel brand. And also they don't tell you you'll need a mold line remover. Or a hobby knife really to clean up the part. So... You know. Anyway, so you choose what you want, but they all build fairly similar besides the weapon loadouts and whatnot. So step one, you've got A, which is one and two. Now the front piece, you attach it to the top of the second part, which is his back. And you get a little bit here to attach, but they go on quite nicely. Then B... You get the third and the fourth piece you get 1a which is that part basically the side pieces go in here sometimes you have to wiggle it around a little bit sometimes they go on really easy but basically this little part here fits here and then you have to attach it around here it's not too bad though at all now C. once you've got 1b done it's basically his legs now this little bit goes around the back here and it carries on this 
piece of cable in here so it's not too bad though you will find it at the back little area for that to fit to and then obviously you go into this section here with the legs I find these quite easy to put together though might seem complicated but no not really so D you've got one C now so this is a decorational piece that goes around his crutch area that's 117 that piece so you put that there but you know I'd suggest or say that you probably don't need to do that right away you can sort of do all of these steps and build them and then come back and choose or put these pieces in if you wish if you want to follow it step by step though do so but six and nine that's his feet now if you look there's like a little square peg there so they go in quite easily no issues and then the old tick and then eight and seven so it's trying to show you that I believe these steps are up here and it's trying to show you down here with how they go and so somewhere around there is that little wire part that I mentioned shouldn't have too much issue lining that up and putting that there though now two body B I mean these are all the same steps nothing different there now C Again, you're repeating the same steps really as before with the body. See, so it's done it all. All it's got is the feet to put on. And this little crutch decoration is this little keychain of teeth and whatnot. So, yeah. Now, body C, well, for some reason it looks like this is all the steps again I kind of just went through not sure though yeah I'd say body C and then you've got D basically it's the same steps but it's got this piece of cloth here so as you can tell that's fitted to the each side you can see there's two arrows for that one so that's well, that's all good You've got your little grot oiler, peewee. So he's easy, he's cut them off the sprue, put them on the base. He's got his squig in one hand already. You put 147 over his face or his neck, that's his head. His little arm goes on. Now he does have a little wire that goes around his back again, but as you can see here, you go around the back and you just connect it to this part. Again, you shouldn't have any issues, just don't overload the glue on that part. Just put a nice little bit of glue on the ends there. So that's him done. That's a back shot. Now you have some armour plates. Look how awesome these are. You've got some studded ones, some girder drain looking ones. You've got some different shapes and sizes, ones with rivets. And then there's cybernetic looking one more and ones with glyphs and so then you've got your left arms so you, we didn't put the arms on before so all those are uh, arm pieces and then you've got the left arm and the right arm so these are shoulder pads as you can see they're all different shapes and sizes again you've got ones with checkers and ones with glyphs and spikes but as you can see in this step how it goes on to it it's got another view as well so now step nine is the heads so obviously it says that times three because obviously you get that many miniatures that you're going to need to build so look at these heads though these head sculpts are I don't mind boys and knobs for sure, but mega knobs, they have some really good faces. This 106 one is just awesome. I mean, they're all really good, hey? But you can just see that they're orcs that have lasted longer, and if they've had their eyes removed or battle damaged, they just put a bit of cybernetic on it and 
slap them on the arse and send them back to war kind of thing. You know, just really awesome. But yeah, so we were in this stage. They haven't put the arms on yet. So you choose your head that you like and you stick that on. Now again, you get one of these for each, but you get obviously enough to do at least a couple of sets of these with a different one on each. So yeah, they're really good as well. They have a sort of a piece of tank that goes with it, some of them. Some of them are just kind of bolted on. Now, I'd have to say the Space Marine with the skulls and the top knot are the best. But yeah, obviously I like variation and having different variants and whatnot so they're not all the same. So obviously that goes on his back there, but we've got all these jaws here, so... You get the two side plates that go into the actual jaw part. So obviously you get enough for each one of them. And they're all different again. And then, yeah, that's what they look like once you put on that side panel. And then you clip it to his side. I mean, yet again, another tip that I'd give if you've watched any of my other videos. I normally give a tip if I feel the need to. I'd keep this off. You can always put it on with blue tack so you can spray the model just a little bit of blue tack or whatnot just here. Not too much, so you go over much of the model, but just a little bit just so you can put it on. You can spray it and undercoat and prime it. And then you can take it off, paint the face, and then you can get into even this a bit easier. You know, you might not be able to get into the inside of the jaw. Just makes life easier really. These are the mega knobs once they're all built. So yeah, they're looking beasty, aren't they? Now we'll go through the mega knobs with power claw and twin link shooters. So the power claws come in a couple of different parts, as you can tell. So you get a side and another side and you obviously jam them together. You get these claws that go on the underneath and then it goes onto this part. So you get, obviously, enough to do them all again. All slightly different. Like this one's got a big blade. This one's got a couple of smaller ones. This one's got a couple of big chunky ones. So they're all nice and different. So that one's closed. That one's more like a crab claw. You know, they're all, they're all different, which is nice. You've got your twin link shooter. Now again... You get two sides that you jam together and make the big shooter. You get a piece of ammo that's coming out. You get a rocket here. Bayonet. So that's what it's like when it's built. As I say, there's a few different variations again of that one. This one has smaller rockets. But two of them... So it's just nice that they all put their kit together. It's just how it would be, especially with orcs. They're not as uniformed as your marines and stuff. They'd kind of customise and do what they want with their weapons and be slightly different than the next orc. So that's what it's like when it's built. But yeah, they're your twin link shooters. So you've got a couple more here. Again, the rockets and the parts are all slightly different, smaller in length or whatever. And here you get ones that have the rockets and one that has the bayonet. So final assembly. So it looks like it's quite a lot of stuff, but remember he's all built. So you just get the arms, put them into this little part here, this little circular part put the weapon on now these are quite good because it gives you options here you can actually stick them on and they stay there quite well without even needing to glue them so I mean you could varnish them and chop and change them if you wanted they might fall off eventually over time obviously if you're really advanced you could magnetize them if you want so yeah, 
So you get those parts, you get this little bit that goes under. It's just sort of an extra bit of armour. These are the shoulder pads, which it showed earlier anyway. You get this little part that can go on top. But I mean, if you're an advanced builder, you can add any of these little bits anywhere that may fit. And there you've got the Mega Knobs in all their glory. Now we'll have a quick look at the kill saws. So again, you get a left and a right piece that go together. So that's sort of the engine and the saw blade here. Then you get slightly different ones as well. This one looks like it has two blades because it's got one blade on each side. This one's just a big individual blade. And then this blade is totally different. It's sort of like a customised chain sword. So yeah, you get the right piece. That was the left piece. So get one for each side. You can obviously chop and change a bit. You don't have to have them matching sides. It's a final assembly. This is him with his kill saw. It's the same steps again that I mentioned before. But the only difference is this little peg here. They're putting on these kill saws. So again, it might seem complicated, but if you break it down, it's not really. Just follow those steps and you can put those weapons on. So that's them with the kill saws. So as I say, these are all obviously sort of kind of identical each side. You could chop and change if you want. So all up to you. But yeah, these look like two chain swords been made into a big kill saw, which is awesome. So now we'll go and have a look at the big mech. So he's got teleporter blaster. So... He's a little bit more advanced, but nothing hard. So we got this part. Basically, you get two sides that go together to make this, and then you get that front panel that goes on. And then you repeat that here, and then you repeat it again. But all of those, you get two smaller ones on the side, and then a big one. And then they go to this. So you get a hole there and you put it against this. This has like a little clip here that will fit in there. Now this would be where you would dry fit or at least try it out before you glue. Just so you know how it works, how it clips in. So you'd put a bit of glue here and obviously slide them in there. So that's that on the back. This is how you build this bottom part. So this is all one piece and then you get these two parts. Now I remember that this has, it's easy to go in because it has sort of like a half circle or something. So you know sort of how it goes in place there. So once you've got this teleporter blaster all done, you put these wires in between it. So it's like that. But I've actually built mine so far without the wires, so just make it all the, so I can paint all of this, and then eventually glue the wires on. That's just another tip, or that's how I do it. I just get a bit annoyed if, say, I put all this stuff here, it'd be hard to get behind the wires, even if you can't see most of it. You will be able to see a little bit, and just same here. It might be hard to get into some of this, so it might be hard to paint some of this, but. You'll be able to see it. But you might not be able to get there with the brush too easy. But yeah, that's the teleporter blaster done. So final assembly. So basically his body's all done the same. His arms are the same. His head part. His head. So this plate is where the teleporter blaster sort of attaches to you know, he has these weapons so as you can see he has two different variants two different weapons you can once you put this all on and he's built 
and put on this face plate and just this little bit here which is just sort of some cybernetics and some cables and stuff now this can go sort of over his face or you can put it up like that I guess like a welding mask mega knob with power claw and twin linked shooter and you got the ones with the two kill saws then you got the big mech there's the stats even though it's probably different or will be soon have a quick look at that as well now we got three different sprues so I'll go through this with you so this is all the kill saws so as you can see sort of they're two of the same in a way but you clip it to the other side so you clip it to one of these parts Yeah, I'll show you, these are those totem pole with glyphs on them. That's the side of their bodies, the front, and then the back piece. It all kind of comes together. So you can even see 1920 and 22 or whatever, 23. So, they're the hands, or arms, the little feet he's got, little crutch cloth. You've got some claws here, claws with the attachment that it goes on to, shoulder pads. And the other one will be the shooters, the twin linked. Yeah, yet again you get one side which is sort of the gun and then you get to clip it onto which you can see easier this side but obviously it's all numbered to make it easy for you and if you're an advanced modeler you can kind of change it or chop and work with it a bit more you get these big missiles the feet, the sides of the body again, now I do believe the sides of the body you might need to put them to the to the one body but yet again if you're an advanced model you probably can muck around with it but from memory I had issues when I didn't put one the sides with one on the same body so I believe they might be made to fit that way but I could be wrong might just be miss not I might just be not remembering correctly yeah, that's the back again now we've got peewee here really nice little detailed grot he is love that little helmet Like a little welder's mask on. And then we've got one face here. Just here we've got one face as well. Now this is the third mega boss, but also it's the big mech sprue. And the faces or the heads. So this is that weapon that I was speaking about before. Teleporter blaster. These are those little parts that are attached to this bit. And as I was saying, sort of got like a half circle so they can slide in. So you know which way they're going and just to make life easier. That's my favourite pole. You got his little wrenchy weapon you got a face there it looks really awesome and these are all those parts of the weapon that you put together 
how detailed all these little buttons and whatnot are. So awesome. Looks like some crazy weaponry, hey? Got some Dr. Frankenstein, some crazy mad laboratory type stuff. Yeah, these are the sides again that go into the body. In the back of him, his little feet, his arms. And we'll have a quick look at the head, say. That one looks beast as, so good. That little girder thing over his eye. This guy's been all stitched back together. He's had like his face sliced off or his eyes been wrecked. Put a cybernetic in there. You've got a couple more. You've got a couple more heads there. So yeah, overall this is a really nice kit. You get plenty of extra parts as well. So for all us orc lovers, you can build them as it says mega knobs you can or you can add a big mech in there and you get one body for each but you do get all the accessories all the weapons that you don't use obviously you can use wherever you feel fit so it's a nice kit definitely a cool unit and also you have so many accessories in here as well that you'll be able to do lots of stuff with it so the boys the knobs and the Mega Knobs, they all come with some really nice little bits. So you can put them in your bits box. So yeah. I hope you enjoyed that review. And anyone that is new to Orcs might have gave them some insight or direction of how to use these. But as always, I appreciate you watching. This was G the Hyper Sapien. And I'll catch you next time.